All right, cool. Uh, welcome back, everybody, and everybody who's going to be tuning in online and watching the recording. I'm incredibly excited because one, uh, one of our very own is coming to speak, but also one of our very own is also fairly famous in the space, uh, being an agency and also has an incredible show. If you haven't actually watched the GOAT show before, it's a, it's a definite must. Um, but we are incredibly excited to have Mike Arce here today. So without further ado, please help me, at just one of our own, but also just an amazing dude, please welcome Mike Arce to the stage. Hey. hey. Yes. What's up, man? Yes. How you doing? Doing great. Have a seat. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Now, remember what I said about these chairs. Yeah, you said sit all the way back and, and yeah. Swing your feet. You're right, because I'm short, so my feet might swing. <laughs> <laughs> you look great. You look cute, though. All right, so, um, Mike, thank you so much for coming and, care and bringing your tripod. I really appreciate that. Um, <laughs> but one of the things that, uh, the reason why it made total sense for you to come here is because, one, we have a ton of agencies in our community who are trying to grow. Um, I've seen you guys. I know your story. I know the scrappiness that it took. Uh, I love that story. I want to get into it. But also, I know that you transitioned to, from your agency into really a, a content and, and, and a really amazing media publishing company mm -hmm. as well. And so a lot of people are probably either going about that wrong mm -hmm. or they're just, or they don't need to do that at all. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and still can, they can accomplish their goal. So what I would love to do is uh, one, so everyone knows out here in the audience is that they are getting, um, I don't know what's happening right now, uh, but they're getting a, are we good? Are we good? All right. So they're going to ask questions at the end. If that's yeah. cool with you. Yeah. Um, everybody cool with that? Asking some questions at the end, a quick AMA. All right, so look, here's my first question. Why did you start an agency? And when was it? And then tell me how easy it was. Oh, man. <laughs> All three. Uh, well, I, I didn't start an agency for the reason that I think a lot of people do today. Because being an entrepreneur is like a, it's like a cool thing now. Where when I think I started it, I didn't know. What, I, didn't, I don't think I heard the term entrepreneur until I was like, like making money from this thing for like a year or so into it. I just didn't know a lot of the terms that actually even an agency owner should know. I didn't know what SEO was until a year after, you know, having this company. I know it was crazy, but. Wow. Um, so Some how, people still don't know what SEO is, so. Yeah, yeah, search engine optimization. I got it now, I got it now. <laughs> um, and I, you know, but anyway, so going back, I started it um, because my, my, you know, we just weren't able to make money. We started in 2010 in yeah. the worst time of the economy. And my wife had gotten pregnant and um, you know she had uh, gotten. She told her boss that she got pregnant, and he was all excited for her. Everyone was excited for her. They all said great news, and they gave her hugs. And then later that day, cut back. So my wife was the only one cut back. She worked there for 18 months. Wow. And so she didn't tell me she was pregnant because she was waiting for Father's Day. Uh. And so she just told me cut back. So I didn't fight for her because I'm the I'm the aggressive one. She's very passive. So she just kind of like that sucks. That sucks. Whereas I would have been like, what? Yeah. No, you can't do that. Yeah. So she, uh, she went and interviewed for other jobs. She got another job and um, worked there for about a month and a half. Ended up telling me, not on Father's Day, she waited till my birthday because she didn't have a job oh. on Father's Day yet. And she didn't want to like, I, thought she, I think she thought it would like freak me out. It was our first kid together. And so um, she told me on my birthday, I was like, oh, I can't believe you didn't tell me this. You should have told me I would have helped out with this. Anyway, I was like, you got to tell your boss now. Does he know? She's like, no, she's sucking it up. And my wife's 103 pounds. So when she's like five months pregnant, like you can see you're five months <laughs> pregnant, you know? And so I was like, you got to tell him. And she did on Friday, end of the day, totally terrified. They were all happy for her Monday. They cut back only her again. So she That's got fired twice company. in the same pregnancy. Yeah. So there's like a lawsuit there, right? Is yeah, that, oh, yeah, one? yeah. So like some, somebody's sitting here going like, "That's <laughs> bullshit." In, you guys, yeah, okay. Yeah, in Arizona, it's a right to fire, and it's a you know, and I, I'm sure they're like, we could have dug in and we could have done stuff, but like you know, we were 20, I was 26 or something, 25 at the time, and honestly, I didn't really like, I don't know. We just kind of moved on, and I was, uh, my income went from like 10 grand a month in sales to about two grand a month with the economy, you know, taking a big dip, and so. What did you do before? Uh, yeah. I was actually leading a sales floor of about 70 people, and uh, we were basically helping people with their credit, and that's pretty much it, like wow. just help selling people credit repair stuff. Um, I did a bunch of stuff before. I, so I've had 22 jobs by the time I was 24. So I sold a lot of stuff. What's your worst job? Oh, gosh. Uh, you know, I don't know, man. I liked all my jobs. I, I, I thought this isn't the one... going out to anyway. You can be real with us. No, no, no. I am real. I, I, I really liked all of them. I actually do like... 
Work. I, I like work. So, like, if I, I found it all interesting. I don't think I worked at any place long enough to, like, hate it. Yeah, 22 but. and 24. Is like, <laughs> you're like, yeah, guys, hired. Bye. Like, yeah. It's good. Um, I, heard, I heard your interview with uh, Nick Kuzmich, and I also did Cutco Knives. Ooh. And uh, so that was kind of, like, weird for me because, like, I would have to ask my friend's parents, who I barely knew, to, like, let me cut rope and pennies in front of them. And, like, <laughs> sometimes the pennies didn't cut. And you know, no, anyway. that's not true. They cut every time. Yeah, well, I, you have to know how to cut it. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so anyway, um, so it's, it's it's safe to say that you were you were scrappy. You were scrappy with that, and kind of always just trying to make some money. Yeah, yeah. So we were like, what do we do? We had my wife and I. We had uh, you know five hundred dollars in savings. We had just bought our house. We just paid off our wedding ourselves. We had a baby on the way, and we were losing about fifteen hundred dollars a month right now with her losing her job and my income going down. So I had this company, I started Loud Rumor, which is the agency I've got today. But at the time, I started it like 10 months before. And I didn't really do anything with it because of that whole good to great you know, deal. Like, we're good, so why work to be great? Like, we were good. Yeah. So I never put effort into it. And uh, then we're like, well, maybe we could do something with this. And at the time, all it was was, if you owned a business, I like do my best to get you to want to buy a website or redo your website. And I charge you like 600 bucks for it. And I get people in the Philippines to do it for 120 right? And then I'd make the difference. Similar to Ryan's story. I think yeah. Ryan's got the same kind of deal. Very similar story, yeah. And then, um, yeah, then from there, like, you know, you had to kill every day to eat, right? Because <laughs> websites, there's no recurring. So we thought, like, maybe we do ma website maintenance, and that wasn't as good as we thought it would be. And then uh, this random uh, email from India came in, dear sir slash madam, you know those? Yeah. How yeah. many of you guys got a dear slur sir slash madam? <laughs> Well, my first one I read because it was my first one. <laughs> <laughs> Did you also talk to a prince in Nigeria? I or? talked to a uh, I talked to a guy in India named Frank, and <laughs> <laughs> that's a very common name in India. If you don't know that, I'll so was, you know, yeah, Frank, yeah. Frank Smith, Frank, Jeremy. So then <laughs> I ended up talking with him, and he's like, "We can guarantee you first page first page placement um, of ninety percent of your keywords, or, or and you don't have to pay us until you do." And I was like, "Whoa, this is before all the algorithm issues came in, so it was actually easier." I was like, yeah, let's do that. They did. So I started selling SEO like that. And it was great. And I started understanding SEO. And then SEO changed. And so I did what a lot of people did. I went to AdWords. I missed that boat by a little window. And then after that, I went to Facebook. And then, you know, here we are today. And now we got a different, a totally different agency than when we first started. Right. Yeah. So you actually, the story, the part of the story that I love the most was how you, uh, I think you were making phone calls from a hallway at some point. Yeah. And I really want people to understand. So how many people in here, like when you started your agency, okay, some of this recently, um, were just taken, I mean, let's say this, the long hours, the it was just you. Like, Does anybody remember their first customer and how they got them? Is it similar to how they're getting them now? How did you get your first customer? Um, so, my, so my wife was like, my wife's a worry wart anyway. Like, even when things are going good, she's, like, worried a little bit. So, in this case, she's pregnant. So, you know, for anybody here, who's here had babies before? Hey, women? Women, men. Not men, you yeah, can't count. Brian, put your hand down, Brian. <laughs> like, Stop. hormones are already a little, you know, not exactly steady, right? I don't know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, me neither, right? If but my I, wife watches, I heard, baby, you were a perfect angel. Things. So, you know, between that, her being a worry war, and then us losing 1500 bucks, and then me saying, let's just you know, work with people in India, which by the way, that means two o'clock in the afternoon here is like two o'clock in, in the morning there. So that barrier was weird. We barely slept. Um, so I was like, look, just cold call. I, I literally, because I, I have a lot of experience in sales and now even more, because I've really gotten to spend a lot more money than I was able to do before at that time. So I, I created, I bought a binder. I went to like Office Depot or something. I bought a binder and I bought a bunch of dividers and you know those little tabs when you're in school, it's like English, you flip to that, you can take notes in English. Well, I had a tab for every objection that she might get. So there was a script for the initial cold call. And if somebody says, how come I've never heard of you before? Flip to that. Um, do you guys guarantee? Flip to that. Like whatever they said, there was a tab for that and you'd flip to it. And then anytime she got an objection I never heard of, then we create a tab for that. So we had like 30 tabs and they were color coded. Anyway, my wife, this is when you know, this is how, I, when somebody tells me like, oh, you know, I don't know how you can make more than 50, 60 cold calls in a day. This is how I know that they're choosing to do things outside of doing that. Because my wife at five months pregnant, cold called for five straight weeks, 230 calls a day. Wow. 200, and, and I, that's not a guess. We didn't like use the sticks. I took the software from my, where I was managing sales and I got a license and I actually used it so I can track my wife to motivate her 
And she was at, someday she made <laughs> 250, 260. So she was making 230 call calls a day. Now, I don't think I could hit 230 because I can have better quality conversation. I could probably get up to about 180. But she was you know, getting hung up on a lot. And that's another thing, right? So ladies, you had babies before. Imagine people telling you F you all the time and hanging up on you throughout the day. And you still got to keep going. So she ended up, um, she would get me, whenever she gets somebody on the phone that was interested, uh, she would text me the person's name, company, phone number. And I would be at my work. And I had this little netbook. Do you guys remember netbooks or note? What are they called? Yeah, they're like they like laptops, but they're like not laptops. <laughs> they're, like, little, they're tiny though, right? The buttons are like yeah, like you have to be a Keebler elf to type, and so which works for me almost. <laughs> so, so she got this. I got this book for like two hundred fifty bucks at Best Buy, and you had to have it plugged in in order for it to work. For some reason, it didn't like after a month. So, <laughs> she would text me. I would go upstairs to the abandoned bathroom. So if you guys. Um, Remember, the economy was bad. A lot of places were going out of business, so a lot of went out of business. So everybody knows if you, if you work in a building that has multiple levels, th that was the poop floor. The only time anybody went up on that floor was when they didn't want everyone else to know they had to go with number two. Well, there's been a lot right. of poop stores today, actually. Huh? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just telling you. I don't know why, but that seems yeah. to be the day. And I feel bad she's eating like a branded muffin or something. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know. Uh, so It's her fault. <laughs> I'll take accountability for that. So I end up going upstairs. And I would sit against the wall, I'd plug in, and I would make the call right from there. And um, I still have pictures hanging up in my office that I took before the, I, moved, I left that day. I took pictures of the hallway, so I had them canvassed up and everything. But I would call from there. So I would just you know, uh, make the sale or make the appointment if the person wanted to meet. And all she did was she'd go to Yelp, she'd type in plumbing, our zip code, sort by distance, boom, call. Um, you know, uh, catering, zip code, sort by distance, boom, go. She didn't care about no research, none of that. I think people spend too much time realizing cold calling isn't about research and taking your time and knowing who you're calling. Because at the end of the day, they're going to hang up on you. Most times, out of, you know, nine out of ten, they're going to hang up on you. And so you don't need to do all this research. All you got to do is get them excited, like as quickly as you possibly can. I made cold calls the other day. I got, I got a group called Agency GSD. And GSD, anybody know what GSD stands for? Yeah, can we say that here? Yeah, you have. I just swore a minute ago. Okay, get you yeah. done. Yeah. So, you know, uh, in the group, somebody said, like, hey, Mike, I heard you, you did cold calls. Uh, you know, a lot of people say that, but can you actually really do cold calls? And so I was like, you know what, let's cold call right now. So I just live in our Facebook group. I, right there when he asked me, I cold called 10 people. I booked two demos, right? And so that was yesterday. <laughs> so, so, so I have a question. Get him on the phone. Let's, let's talk about that. I don't mean to deviate from your story because I think it's really incredible. And I actually think we we're wrapping on it, but... How many people in here cold call right now to get clients? Oh my God, it's such a crazy waste opportunity. Well, I want to talk about this for a second because I feel like everyone hates you right now. Um, and so, because, <laughs> no, because, because now we're, you're going to challenge them to do this thing I'll that cold nobody call right wants now. to do. Please, please, no, hold on. We're not doing that. <laughs> I need more information out of your brain before we do that. So, um, cold call, how many people have done that in their lifetime? Yeah. How many people have cold called? How well did it work? Yeah? Ray, keep your hand if you, had a, if you got a hold of everybody you called. <laughs> yeah, hey, hold on. Uh, how many of you guys been to a gym before? How well did it work? Well, how good did you do it? Right? So it's yeah. different. But go ahead. That's, that's the point. <laughs> and I always sit around, like, if you've actually cold call or you've made, like, 90 calls a day, which I've definitely been in that role. And also, or anybody done door-to-door door, door, door sales? Right? It's a whole different thing to call somebody and then also have a face-to-face -face cold mm -hmm. conversation, right? Uh, I'm only going to tell a brief story. We, uh, Rob Hagerty, who's one of our salespeople, ha uh, I saw him at TNC literally pull the best sales move of all time where he was sitting there and I watched him and as he was talking to somebody, a piece of spit came out of their <laughs> mouth and hit his lip right here. And he had two options, which is one is to what? Freak out, right? And the other one was to eat it and keep going. That's what I, that's the other, he did that. And I sat there and I was like, this is a whole different game that we're talking about here. This shit has changed, right? He, he literally was just like, mm, and he got the sale. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. So tell us, but tell us why it's a missed opportunity. Tell us why, because it, it sounds incredibly difficult, Mike. Well, you got it. So all the strategies are the same. So marketing, you, we all know marketing when it comes to like running an ad. So if you have an ad, let's say, let's say the ad that you're running is 
helpful content for the sake of building up the retargeting list or let's say a, a lead magnet. The lead magnet isn't selling them the marketing service, right? It's really just, I wanna be able to provide info for you. The sale right now is I want you to just give me your email address. So I want from you in exchange for this free content. Then down the road, through retargeting and through funnels, then you get them to the bigger thing. On that cold call, the very first sale you're making is just give me 10 seconds. That's it, like all I want is 10. And then after that, just give me 30. And then after that, just hear me out. And then after that, let's have a longer conversation. So everyone, I think people wanna skip, just like you do in marketing. It's marketing's the same thing. Marketing's the same thing, getting in shape is the same thing. You don't, like, how many guys, you know, uh, they finish high school 20 years ago and they wanna get back into the gym and the first thing they do is they hit the bench press. And it's like, no, you are not ready for that yet. The body's not ready for that. Go start with a couple push-ups and be some chest press machines, but don't go crazy to the end, you're not ready. And so that guy's not ready. That guy thinks you're a freak, you know, no matter what you do. So you've gotta just, you gotta get excited, you gotta get them going just for that first 10 seconds. And yeah, I get, if I make 100 cold calls, I'm gonna speak to at least 10 decision makers. If I speak to 10 decision makers, I'm booking at least five or six demos. If I'm booking five or six demos, I'll make two sales. If I'm making two sales a day, pff, I'm good. Yeah, okay, well let me ask you a question. So let's give me a, a, a I'm, ring me up. Let's, ring you up? Yeah. Okay, so I'm calling you right now? Yeah, call me right now. Who hey, are I'm, you? Hello, I'm, uh, let's Can say, you be a, 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 a Pilates owner. studio in Jacksonville? Okay, so I'm in Jacksonville. I'm in a studio. Yeah, you're a Pilates studio. A Pilates stu I'm yeah. a Pilates studio Are you the owner or are you the gatekeeper? Uh, Who do you want to be? Gatekeeper. gatekeeper? All right, I'll be the gatekeeper in okay. Jacksonville at a Pilates studio. You got it. Which is amazing. Here's right, the so. deal. I can't look at you. You can't look at me. You know why? Why? Because you can't role play that way. Why not? Why can't he look at me right now in this role play? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. He can't read me. I can't read him. So you got to look over there. I'm going to look and over I'll look here, over actually. Here. And you look over there. I'll yep. look over here. Yep. I'll look at, I'm looking back. <laughs> Never role play cold calling or any type of sale, phone sales looking at each other because you're going to freeze up in the real deal. What's okay? my name, though? Give me my name. Your name's Marcus. No, no, no. But give me like a Pilates studio manager name. Uh, uh, Richard. All right, good. Got it. Richard. All right, cool. <laughs> All right. All right. So you rang me up. All right. So uh, you'll be ABC Pilates, okay? okay cool. Okay, phone rings, um, go ahead and answer. Hi, ABC Pilates, this is Richard speaking. Hey Richard, uh, my name's Mike. I'm actually looking at your company on Yelp right now. This, this is ABC Pilates, right? Uh, yeah, this is, uh, who can I, yeah, I'm not, yes, this is ABC Pilates. <laughs> hey, no problem, um, I'm, I'm actually calling you up. Um, I know you get calls like this all the time, just give me 10 seconds, I wanna show you something really cool. I actually am a fitness studio owner, and I'm, I'm sorry, a fitness marketing company owner, and I work with fitness studios just like yours. Wait, wait, I'm sorry, I'm, who is this again? My name is Mike, and I'm with a company called Loud Rumor. We work with 800 studios just like yours, actually more of them Pilates than anything else, and we generate 200 to 400 leads every single month for the studios we work with. And if you give me like 30 seconds, I can prove to you how I can do for you too. My, Mike, I don't think we're really interested. I, I know I you're not interested. You were doing something else. You're interested in getting, if I was a member calling you or a person that wanted to be a member, would you be interested then? I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm here to I wanna make that. I'm, I wanna make that happen 10 times a day for you. Are you interested now? Well, it's in, I don't even make those decisions. Okay, who's the person that would make that decision in your company? Bob. Bob, okay, look. Uh, but Rashad? Bob's super busy though. Mike, I mean, I think this sounds cool. You're right, I get a lot of these calls every day. I'm not really sure that like we're super interested. Bob is really busy, like incredibly busy. Obviously he's running this, this Pilates studio. We, we Pilates it up in here. I mean, it's, it's busy. It's a really busy studio. You're right, no problem. So when you say he's busy, is he busy because he's just like that CEO that's got so much on his plate? Or is he busy because he's got more members and what he, he knows what to do with and he needs to find a way to get some of them off? I mean, he's like literally running the classes and doing everything. Got it, got it. Okay, would it be easier for him to run this business if he was able to hire instructors because he has so many members that you could do that? I mean, we would need it, it would cost money. Of course, so how about this? If I can show you how you can literally get this service almost for free within a few weeks of working with us, and I can get hundreds of new members in your studio, would you give me five minutes? Or, or better yet, would you be able to tell me a time that I would be able to talk to Bob? And if you were me, what time would that be? Yeah, I mean, yeah, let me see. Can, I, can, you put, can I put you on hold for a second and see if I can just grab him? Yeah, and Richard, really quick too, just, just can I just say something? Yeah. I, most people right now, we're like 45 seconds in, most people right now hang up on me. And uh, so thank you so much for at least giving me this time. My job's hard as it is, and I just, I really, really appreciate you giving me a chance. This is really, really nice of you, and thank you. So yeah, I'd yeah. love to talk with Bob. Uh, yeah, ho hold on just a second. You got it, thank you. All right, so interesting scene. Yeah. Round of applause, pretty cool. <laughs> so talk us through the process there, because it's interesting because that sounds, some people that sound like this, 
Yeah. Um, and also, I actually felt like I needed to get someone else on the phone for this conversation. One, I listened to you, because yeah. I could have just been like, click. But the fact that I was still listening made me feel like, well, one, this is over my head, I'm not really sure, but I already gave you some information about Bob. But how did I close it at the end? Yeah, like that you appreciated it, which was really interesting, because in fact, the fact that you said like most people hang up on me made me feel like I'm gonna go work for you now. Yeah. Like I'm gonna help you out, because it sounds you, like- I made you feel like a better person. And so, the, so what I did was, there's what's called creating boxes. So you can create a box and put somebody in it and it's up to them to take themselves out, right? Uh, I coached 13 seasons of basketball and there's one kid, Dante, and he was very low self-esteem, but he's a pretty fast kid. And I pulled him aside and I said, hey, Dante, how come you're not running as fast as you can? He's like, what do you mean? I go, you're the fastest kid out there. What, what are, you, are you afraid to show everybody how fast you are? He's like, no. And we talked about that for a few minutes and then as soon as he went out there, what do you think he started doing? Running fast, right? It's up to him. He's the fastest kid on the court. It's up to him to not be. So for you, mm -hmm. I just made you look like that guy that's open-minded, not everybody else that hangs up on people. You're the helpful guy. You're the guy with the good heart that really helps. And so now I put you in that box up to you to prove me wrong. The only way to prove me right that it, I, is for it, you to go do the thing with Bob. Right, and if and I pro <coughs> the prove you right is actually that I would, or to prove you wrong, I would just hang up the phone or never come back after. Or, or, or come back without Bob. Right, exactly. Yeah. So that, that's an interesting, is that helpful at all for anybody in here? I feel like I, I sit around and we're looking, now I'm not expecting everybody in here is gonna go cold call, right? So let's say these people in here are like, <laughs> I'm not doing that. So, yeah, you don't have to. Yeah, right, so that's a question I have. So should somebody be doing it for them? Um, or should or that then, be there? Yeah, yeah, I got two people cold calling all day for me. Um, they don't cold call as well as I do. Um, I, I think confidence is a tough thing. I, I've, got, I've got confidence that I, I got lucky where I got my confidence from. So my, that you heard the story of have, my wife and all that stuff, but there was like a story before that, that like, you know, where I was super, super low confidence and my life was in shambles. And, um, you know, because of what happened there, I was forced to have confidence. Like that woman that like lifted the car to like save her baby, right? So I was forced to learn what I could actually do and I didn't like motivate myself. You know, so that's the thing that kind of sucks is I learned what I can do out of necessity. And yeah, like that call, as crazy as it is, I have that energy. How many of you guys thought that was high energy on that call? I've got that energy every single call I make. How many of you guys noticed I was smiling while I was talking? I didn't actually see you smile. Could you hear it? I could. Okay, all right. that's all that matters, right? Because that's why I was doing it. I was looking right? over at uh, Michael Miola the whole time, actually. Yeah, so. I'll stand while I make cold calls. I walk around. The energy's got to be, like, super high. It's just really interesting because it's such a juxtaposition <laughs> for being, like, a marketer who cold calls, right? Like, it's mm -hmm. an interesting thing because cold call has a stigma. They work with... hand in hand. Okay, but, yeah, okay. I get more people on my retargeting list from cold calling them than I do from anything else. You know my retargeting list just builds with the right people. Because worst case scenario, can I get you to at least look at a link? So my, okay, <coughs> I'm being very challenged right now. If anybody's ever read any of my articles about cold calling being dead, this is a very interesting part because I do believe cold outreach feels a little off because yeah. there's so much information out there. But you're saying like, we don't need to focus on just like getting a bunch of information, mm -hmm. finding out what their kid's name is, et cetera. You just need to get excited about what you're calling. Get about. excited, get, get worst case scenario, get them to click on a link. Because now that I got them on a link, what happens is that retargeting kicks in and one of two things either happen. Either, well, no matter what, I'm getting 2,000 or plus people on my list, right? The right people. Yeah. Not like, oh man, that one was watered down because that is an agency that wants my content to sell it to their, no, I'm calling the person. I'm picking who's on my list, right? So I got 2,000 people plus added to my list every month. Now what happens is when they see my retargeting ad, one of two things ha they think. Either one, oh, serendipity, right? They don't know about retargeting. There's that company I just heard about. Have they been here this whole time, right? Or two, they understand retargeting and go, oh shit, this guy does what he talks about, mm -hmm. right? He knows his stuff. So, uh, but either way, my name's in front of them and they remember talking to me. They remember the high energy. They remember me being nice to them, thanking them. So it all comes, and then they hear my voice. So, uh, you know, I think they work hand in hand. I like building my list with cold calling. That's cool. And I also think that like, so let's say they get on your list. So you're mm -hmm. spending time actually going out and calling people on the list. Or are you still doing the traditional marketing pieces of like, let's nurture, let's do the email. Oh, yeah. stuff. So you're doing everything, yeah. but you're also calling them. Yeah. Cause that's the one thing I want to know. How many people in here call the people on their list? Exactly. So Dominic does. Well, Dominic also is a, yeah, you're an anomaly. We'll talk about that later. He'll be up here. So <laughs> tell me, tell me, tell me like why you call people on your list. And I know that sounds really crazy and simple to you. You mean like on the email list? Is that what yeah, you're absolutely. Like? Yeah. Cause uh, they subscribe and then you're actually reaching yeah, out. Yeah. If, if they got, so we just created, oh, my, my bag's over there. But um, I created a book 
called Fitness Marketing Secrets. It's like a little booklet. It's like 60 pages long. Uh, I was hanging out in uh, Miami like three weeks ago, and I, uh, Grant Card it was Grant Cardone's event. Yep. And so at the end it's of it, camp. His boot camp, yeah. yeah. So he invited me to go down there, and um, you know, right before I had left early, um, and he was he caught me in the hallway. He's like, "Hey, where are you going?" And I was like, um, "Heading out at you know." Honestly, I just wanted to catch the beach. Honestly, before I left home, because <laughs> uh, I, I knew what they were they were going to the sales pitch now, yeah, yeah. and and I already I already bought the product. Yeah. So um, he's like, "Come by my office tomorrow," and so I went by his office. And we got to talk for a couple hours, which was really cool. And he show, he talked to me about this booklet that he's got, and it's called the Millionaire Booklet. I don't know if you guys have seen it or not. And so he's like, yeah, I wrote it in like two hours or whatever, and, and it takes 20 minutes to read. So I was like, huh. So on the way back on the plane, I wrote the book, right? And uh, so it took me like, it took me six hours. I think he lied about two hours. <laughs> but it took me like six hours to write this 60-page booklet, and it's fitness marketer, fitnessmarketingsecrets.com, how to crush your competitors in the fitness industry or something like that. And so, yeah, I mean, like for that, we're selling them for like free plus shipping type stuff, but you're gonna have to give us your phone number, and yeah, we're gonna call every single because person. Because who's getting that book? Yeah, of course. Exactly. Right? So, so I'm calling every single person on that list. Hey, just wanted to see you got the book. You know, why'd you get it? What was the main reason for? What, what are you hoping to get out of the book? What's your main thing you're looking to get? And either a perfect that book really addressed that. You know what else we got that addresses that? Or you know what, our book doesn't really dive into that too much, but I'm glad you asked that. I got a couple things that I think you will like that'll go hand in hand with that. Can I send it to you? All right. And so from there, you're just building up that hmm. that relationship with so them. So it feels like an exp it, it expedites certain phases of the funnel or the journey, which we're talking about, obviously, customer value journey. Mm -hmm. I, I really like that. How many people have done the little booklet or have something like that? Huh? Putting one together. Putting one together. You know how much they cost? How much would you guys guess they cost? One booklet. Huh? 91 cents. I got 5,000 booklets for like, you know, four or some. And here's a great part about it. So what we also realized, I'm speaking at um, this conference called Bowl, which is an industry conference. There's like 2,000 people there, 2,100 people. And so you get to put stuff in a swag bag if you're a sponsor. So we're also sponsoring out in the hall. So I'm putting a booklet in every swag, or instead of a pen or a, you know, phone thing or whatever, like I'm putting a booklet, fitnessmarketingsecrets.com, with the same face that's used to promote me as a speaker on there. And so, you know, and all that book, that book's just loaded with call to action and loaded with custom domains that I bought that link them to things. So I'll dive into like retargeting. Why should you retarget? I'll say, if you want to see my step-by-step -step strategy on exactly how I do it, go to Mike's, I think it's like Mike's retargetingstrategy.com. And then there's like Mike's decoy effect.com. So throughout the whole book, hmm. loading you up on my retargeting list. And then all those pages have CTAs on them. You know, because I think one of the biggest things that these days, by the way, this is all gold. I love listening to this. Uh, but one of the things that I really was hoping is like, this is your client acquisition strategy as well. So you speak a ton. And one of the things I, I don't want to, I kind of want to shift gears a little bit because we talked about, we polled the audience and polled uh, our, our agency list. And two ways they said they get the most clients is one, referrals. Mm -hmm. That was the number one, which I think is interesting. And the second one was presentations. So tell me when you made the transition because you put a lot of time into building that part of your business. Mm -hmm. And there's people out here that really probably, now they have templates and all that stuff, but how, how much time should they focus? What are they missing if they're not? And then what was the strategy? Like why did you take that leap into going out and speaking and creating a face, of like a speaker face for yourself? Um, Billy Jean, who's been on this with you mm -hmm. already, um, I met him a couple years ago and I was actually like, there was nothing on my company. You won't find videos older than two and a half years old, even though I've been in this for, since 2010. Um, I was trained under different mentorship, which I, I take things from everybody, right? So, I, the, so the mentors I had were right in a lot of ways too, and maybe they're even right in the ways I, I went, but what they said is, Mike, look, if you wanna sell your business one day, the business can't rely on you. The business, they, they, the, the marketing can't rely on you. You can't tie yourself too much to the business. They would give me examples of Nike and you know, stuff like that, and I'm like, all right, that makes sense. And uh, so I always stayed behind the scenes. Yeah. And then when I um, talked with Billy Jean, um, he was talking to me about, you know, build, building it all up that way. And I thought it was interesting. And then, um, that same mentor that gave me that advice, I brought to him that. And he said, you know what, Mike, at the end of the day, I think there's an asterisk next to every piece of advice and you want to really leverage your unique capabilities, whatever that is. You like to teach and you are a good salesperson and you can, you, you like to speak with enthusiasm. That's why you're most comfortable. So if that's the case, what better to do that than on stages? And so you, if that's what you can do, if you can fire people up when you talk, then go fire people up and get them to want to work with you. 
And so that's why I started doing it. I didn't do it because I necessarily think the stage is the best thing for you. Huh. I think for me and maybe for some of you guys in the room or all of you guys, if you guys have that, when like you, if you could get your employees to sit like this when you talk to them or your customers, um, you know, then maybe, maybe you want to look at it too. And by the way, even if you kind of get it, that's still good because you get better at speaking, right? Like my first talk was very, very boring when I look back at it. My first videos were horrendous when I look back at it. Um, I had a weird haircut. I was chubbier. I had no beard. It was weird. Uh, <laughs> but then my, I was monotone. But then like you start to realize that the personality behind the camera on the stage should reflect the personality like when you're telling your favorite story. When I'm telling my family like this story about my son and what he did, I'm like, oh my God, then he came in the room and he did this and he did this. And so that's what makes my family listen. Well, is it that my family listens that way or is it that that's the way I best communicate? And so you just got to learn how do you best communicate? And you got some people like, I can't think of a, a guy that like, oh, like, okay, say a guy like Ty Lopez. Okay, like a guy like Ty Lopez who, whether you like him or hate him, you're going to have your opinion. But that guy, I've seen his stats. He's got a long view count on his, on his videos. People watch like 30, 40 minutes on his videos. Hmm. And he talks like this, you know. So if you really uh, want to start with Bitcoin, uh, like that's how he talks. It works for him. I talk like that, it's not going to work. No. You got to know you. Kevin Hart or, or Will Ferrell and Denzel Washington, two totally different people, right? But both great. But could you imagine Will Ferrell being casted for the training day role? It wouldn't work. That would be the best movie <laughs> of all time. King Kong and God. It would be like a whole different. Ain't got shit on me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, like, it would be a whole different thing. It wouldn't work because the thing is <laughs> you've, got your person, you've got your personality and then you've got your character. And you can change your personality, but you can't change your character. Huh. Um, your character is who you are, who you'd be no matter where you go. I'm competitive. No matter, you put me on an island, born there, raised there, I'm, I'm sure I'd be competing against something. Um, like, a, like a deserted island? Something. So, yeah. I'd be <laughs> Will say you like create your own I, I like, Yeah, I fight with myself on yeah. stuff. And then, and then um, you know, I know I'm competitive. I know I love to teach and I know I love to learn. So I know that's part of my character no matter what. So that's why I have the GOAT show, right? Yeah. The GOAT show for me, it's like competitive. The GOAT, greatest of all time. And that's what we want to meet. And then, um, you know, I love to teach. And so here's a platform where we can teach. But then I love to learn. It's a coaching session for me every, every episode. How do people identify the, that character? So like in here, they're sitting around and like, I don't know about you. I'm a, little, I'm a speaker, but I like I get fired up just listening to you. I'm excited. I'm here like this. Yeah. I want to know, like, that was really cool to understand the personality, the character <laughs> dichotomy, right? So tell me, like, how does somebody identify the true character? Because a lot of people will do a mistake, the fatal mistake of a, of a, of a speaker. They'll go and try and be somebody else. Yeah, right? yeah. And that's, that's where, like, if you go to local comedy clubs, you can, like, see people bomb. And it's because you could, like, that guy's trying to be Kevin Hart, and he's not Kevin Hart. So... You've just got to think like when you're around the people you're the closest with and your friends and your family and you're telling your most excited story, like who are you? Who, who, do you, who are you naturally because you're the most comfortable because that's how you are. If you're telling a series of stories all day, you know, who would you be throughout that day? Um, it's a tricky thing because you've got to like, and you, you could ask other people too. But you've got to just like really take time and pay attention. I, you know what, so I, I told you I want to go to the beach with Grant Cardone's thing, right? The reason I go to the beach is not because I want to sit on the, you know, sand and like just like chill. It's because that honestly is where I can get away and I'll like think about things. I'll think about um, what I'm doing with my family. I'll think about what I'm doing, uh, character with my family, character with work and all that stuff and how it's all playing a role. And you've got to like take that time because if you're, everybody takes so much time to identify their ideal customer and their buyer persona and who is it that's going to buy for me. That's great. But who is it that they're actually buying? And, and do you know who that guy is or girl, right? Who is that person? And you got to really like as much time as you spend here, you got to spend 10 times more knowing who you are so you can sell yourself the best. I'm going to ask a favor. <laughs> um, we're going to get into some questions in a minute, but can you tell us a story? What story? Any story? Yeah, tell us a story. Oh, oh gosh. So I was, you know, I, I wish my mother was here. She'd load you up. <laughs> um, how, can, can, I, can I tell you then, can I tell, go back and tell you the story that changed me? Yeah. Is that good? It'll take me about four minutes. You guys got four? Yeah. Okay. Who's, uh, somebody was like, nah. <laughs> I know. Get so back to the stuff. One thing, too, in sales, good. I can't help but ask questions. So I do that. That's a part of the thing. It's a cool. rhetorical question. Um, clearly, you've got four minutes. So I wasn't the guy, you know, growing up 
I, I wasn't the guy that like liked school. I didn't value school, you know, I, and because I couldn't like imagine myself using calculus in real life, which is a silly way to think, right? You, and then I, I didn't value um, jobs that I worked at. You know, I always looked at every job I worked at as you know, a thing that I was doing right now until I really got a career one day, right? And then I didn't value relationships, you know? I, I didn't spend time or effort in a relationship with a person um, unless I can directly see, like, how he can bring value to me, right? And it was just stupid, because that's not how it works. No, that's not how any of that works, right? And so um, I paid for a lot of that, you know? That over time, I paid for a lot of that. I found myself in 2009, uh, I'm sorry, 2006, 2006, I was $30,000 in personal debt. I had lost my job. Um, I had got evicted from my house. I had one week to stay in my house. Lost my phone, car repoed, and I found out that I was about to become a single dad with a woman that frankly wanted nothing to do with me. Because, I mean, I mean, when you take the stats I just gave you and put it on the dating website, they're not lining up to be the next Mrs. Arcy. Swipe whatever way is not good. Swipe, yeah. right? So I, ha I had a lot of, my, my stats were bad. My yeah. stats were bad. And so, you know, I was like, I was like in a really, really bad spot. And then I remember um, the, the, when it all hit me, because this wasn't like a gradual destruction. Most of what I just said all happened in a 12 or 14 day period. Oof. And so <laughs> I remember I was sitting um, in my house that I was, I had a week left in, right? Um, and I'm watching TV and it was a VHS tape and because I didn't have cable. And then all of a sudden I hear, Poof! all the lights and the TV went off, right? So electric went out. And, uh, you know, I, 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 obviously I would have called the electric company to complain, but uh, my phone was off because I didn't pay that. So that for, turned off a few days before. And even if I could call, what was I gonna say? Like, I mean, I haven't paid my electric bill in three months. So yeah. I knew it was coming eventually. So then anyway, um, my cousin who was my best friend, is my best friend at the time was living with me. And I remember I just, I feel so bad from now looking back, but I gave him like the biggest pity party, like how life isn't fair and, you know, how could this happen and all this stuff, right? Um, and it can't get any worse. Life tip, I learned. Never say it can't get any worse. Um, life's a bitch and really likes to take a challenge. <laughs> so right. it got worse that, that night at one o'clock in the morning. Actually, that's nice. It was a pound, man. It wasn't a nice pound. It was a nice knock. It was a pound. So I go downstairs and uh, I open the door to see what the heck's going on, on the other side. And it was just like giant guy. Like, uh, you ever see um, Happy Gilmore, the guy with the nail in his head? Yeah. It was like that guy. <laughs> <laughs> just huge in a work shirt. And behind him is my car on a rack being taken. Now, I've been hiding my car in the garage, but because I haven't paid my electric bill and the cord was broken for years, um, I was like, all right, I was even in the driveway today. They got me. So they took my car that night. <laughs> um, so now... I turned to my cousin, who's probably waiting for the next pity party, and I just said, you know, I gotta go for a walk. And I, I did, I went for a walk, and it was like a movie, man. Like a minute into the walk, it didn't even start to drizzle, it just rained. <laughs> like, like life is like, can't get any what? <laughs> yeah. How about that? And uh, so I, I remember I just kinda like, I walked in it, cause honestly it felt good to be like, I was just so miserable, I was like, I'm gonna soak in this, you know? I'm just, I, all I need is Celine Dion following me singing. And so, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> my actual, like, that's my dream. So I don't know, how'd you get into my dreams? But. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so anyway, I'm walking and I, I never walked in this direction before while I was walking. I, I went left, I normally go right. Everything's right when you leave my house. And I ended up coming across a church that I didn't even know existed. And I'm not, I wasn't a religious guy, not a religious guy. Um, but I, I went up to this thing for shelter mainly because it was pouring and thundering. And then I had a Rocky Balboa moment. You know, like, everybody watch Rocky? Uh, I hope so. What did, what did Rocky do, like, when he was, like, totally scared? What, what was the first thing he did at night? He went to church, right? All hours of the night, Rocky could just walk in and go to church. <laughs> so that's my experience of church. I'm thinking you can do this and home alone, right? Like, you could just walk in at night. <laughs> and so I go to pull on the door with a wimpy pull because I'm miserable. Yeah. And it didn't open. So I'm looking at this big church short. So I'm like, oh, it's heavy. So I yank on this thing. Sirens, lights. <laughs> I set the alarm off. It's like 1.30 in the morning. So now, by the way, uh, for those of you ever thinking about it, never rob a church. And for more reasons than one, clearly. But for the main reason, uh, secondary reason, maybe, 
cop showed up in less than 30 seconds. Because I remember I pulled it, and I was just so done, I didn't even move. I just went, whatever. Like, <laughs> and then, boo! Like, <laughs> I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> so I explained to the cops what had happened, and you know, what I'm going through, and he actually felt bad for me, he was cool. He's like, look dude, just you can sit on the steps, relax, do what you gotta do, just don't go inside. I'm like, all right. And that was it, man. From that, at that, that moment, I looked up at the sky and I just, I, I committed, I, I admitted everything. I'm like, it's my fault. I'm here because of me. Um, my life is what it is because of me. I'm broke because of me. I've got debt because of me. I got no friends because of me. I got no job because of me. Um, it's my fault and that's it. It's over. It's done. I'm done being this tired, broke kid and I'm tired not being incredible. And, uh, you know, I said, tomorrow's day one. I'm going to go home. I'm going to get a good night's sleep. <clears throat> and I remember asking. I said, whoever you are out there, give me a sign because I don't even know what to look for. I don't even know how to start this process of being good. So give me a sign. And uh, I need help. And so I went home. I went to sleep next morning, woke up early. And uh, I went for a run to the gym that I used to work at. It was about a 35-minute run to see if I could get my job back. I had no car. <coughs> And uh, I walk into the gym, and I'm waiting in the lobby to speak to somebody, see if I can get my job back, or get a referral to a different location. And in the lobby, this is crazy, guys. This is nuts. This woman walks in, and I've never met her before, but I'm, again, I just did value relationships, right? So she goes, Mike? And so I'm, you know, like, have you guys been in that spot where you're like, how do I know you? 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 Because you don't want to be embarrassed. And so I'm like, huh? And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, hey, um, are you going to be here for a few minutes? And I'm like, uh, yeah, and she goes, okay, hang on, I'll be right back. She walked out, came back in two minutes later with a box and said, this is for you. And uh, I said, you know, something like, uh, I think you got the wrong guy or whatever, and she's like, no, you asked for this. I know you're going through a lot right now. Take this. And I'm getting goosebumps now, man. And so um, I opened up the book, and it's uh, the box, and there's this book in it, and it's Purpose Driven Life. And again, not religious, and, uh, you know, she just said, it's a read a chapter a day, don't skip a chapter, don't read ahead, and uh, you know, I hope this helps. And she left and never saw her again. I, I wouldn't, if she could be in this room, I wouldn't recognize her, it was that quick. <clears throat> so I did, I read a chapter that night, first chapter was speaking to me, second chapter uh, made a lot more sense, third chapter I knew what I needed to do. I don't think I ever even finished chapter four. I knew what I had to do, and then from that day on, I've, I have not had a bad day. I've had some rough moments like everybody's had. I've never had a bad day. Every day has been good. I ended up getting a great relationship with my son's mother. I learned how to play the guitar. I learned how to do stupid stuff like solve the Rubik's Cube. Um, I met my wife. We had three kids with, with her. Um, started this business. Uh, we get to travel and we started this amazing company. I got amazing employees and everything just works all the time. Pretty and good. And it all started with making a choice. Right? That when I talked up, I made a choice to myself and to whoever was listening, I made a choice. And that's what getting shit done is. That's what GSD is. That was the beginning of GSD. GSD is get this shit done. Like stop talking about it, stop thinking about it, stop wishing for it, stop wondering why it's not you. Just make it happen. It may take a long time. For me, it took a long time. It took eight years for anything to actually, like for you to even want to know who I am, right? And, uh, but it was worth it, and it's always been worth it to do stuff. I want to give you a round of applause for being an eight-year overnight success, because <laughs> I think that that is an incredible story. Guys, round of applause. <laughs> I, I, actually did, I actually did not know that story. I, don't, I haven't told, that's like fresh for you, that's, for everyone. That's really cool, because honestly, I think that if any of that's a very empathetic story. Can anybody relate to some aspects of that story? I feel like there is a lot of rock bottom there that maybe some of us can't do. Um, but I think that I, I personally can. I really appreciate you sh sharing that story. So let's move into this. Um, clearly, Mike knows a lot. He's been through a lot, done a lot of things. Uh, clearly, is is in a way crazier spot now. And the reason why I brought Mike on here is because he has grown an incredible agency, an incredible show, has done all this, speaks on stages, has that incredible story of of overcoming quite a bit. And I wanted to open it up as we close out here for the next 15 minutes. It's just, let's 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 ask. Can we ask anything? Can we just do an AMA really quick? 100. percent And so you know when you want and when you have time, I have five do not do's. You have five do not do's. Yeah, but as we, an we agency, can, but we can do Q and A's if you want. Let's do yeah. Q can we end with that? You want to do five do not do's? Uh, yeah, can we do it right at the end yeah. of the AMA? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I got, really I got them on my phone. So oh, yeah, okay, cool. All right, let's do it. Who has a, a question? Yep, we already got the mic. Cool. Uh, so I'm cheating because I have the video machine. 
<laughs> oh, you've got Vid Machine. Okay, cool. Um, so you talked about doing cold calling. Yep. And you, in the video machine, you have that method. But what do you actually do now? Oh. What do you mean as far as? For acquisition of clients. Well, we cold call. We have two people cold calling. We've got ads running. We've got retargeting lists, obviously. Cold ads. Well, cold ads and warm ads, ads as well, right? So what we'll do is we've got a lot of content out there. Um, you know, you're an agency owner, you're not a fitness studio owner, so you may not be seeing a lot of it, right? That's the beauty of targeted funnels and all that <laughs> stuff. So we've got stuff like, you know, 11 ways to boost your fitness studio's Instagram, you know, leads and, you know, how fitness studios should be using. I mean, if you go to Loud Rumor um, on YouTube, you'll see we got a ton of videos like that and they're pretty well produced. And all of those are like videos that we'll use in ads. And then we have like call to actions for lead magnets. So then, yeah, those are cold. And then from there, then we'll help them. Um, by like giving them some more free content that's been really good. So like you've seen for agency GSD, me on the flip chart and the flip board and stuff like that. We have stuff like that for our studio owners. And so they'll go through there. And, um, and then from there, like we talk about like, hey, you know, if you want to see how to take it to the next level, we challenge them. So that's another thing too. How do you Th challenge them? So I want you, to th I want you to think about like how you guys present your business to your customer, who, how they hear it. Do they hear you as an option that would like to get a chance? Or do they hear you as an option that, like, do you put them in a box, right? So can I share my 30 second, like what I say? Yeah. <laughs> Ask me what loud rumor is. What's loud rumor? Glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you own or run a fitness studio, loud rumor is your home base. We got this ad agency side that generates hundreds of qualified leads every single month for the studios we work with. We've got a learning center area that literally teaches you how to sell, how to upsell, how to cross sell, how to manage your studio way, way more. And then we've got a community of hundreds of fitness studio owners that are just as committed as each other at scaling their fitness studio way past mediocrity and into something much more serious. We don't work with hobbyists at Loud Rumor. We work with the professionals in this industry. So that's challenging them, right? So now that guy's in a box. You're either the hobbyist and you're not gonna wanna work with me or you're the professional, because that's how you're defining it to me. You can't be the professional and not work with me if I just said that to you. That's really good. That is good. <coughs> Other questions? <coughs> yep, right over here. We got two. Let's start, uh, yeah. I'm interested in hearing your take on the pace of the phone call. So you've got on the cold calling, so mm -hmm. obviously you've got a lot of high energy, but when you were doing the demo with Marcus, the, the pace seems to be a little bit faster than what most people would speak. So does that allow you to control the call a little bit better? Yeah, and, and by the way, you shouldn't hear what I just said and go make a cold call right now. You should practice 100 times on your own first. It should be fluid, mm -hmm. right? Don't practice new moves in the game, practice in practice. Never practice on a prospect or a customer. So. Um, Practice through it, and you'll get faster at it just because you're better at it. If I told you to say the alphabet backwards right now, it'd take you a little while. But if you said it a hundred times, you'll go through it as fast as you do forwards. Mm -hmm. You know. So practice and practice, not on your customers, not in the game. Cool, cool. Mari. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, my question is about um, kind of how you built the team with the company. You said in the beginning you kind of were already out, so you kind of started with you know uh, with the Philippines, if, if I heard mm -hmm. that right. So now, you know, what would your tips be for agency owners that are kind of growing the team or even those that are just getting started that want to grow a team, mm -hmm. kind of what you went through and what you've learned? I don't know if there's like a blanketed uh, advice as far as like what you should hire first. I think a lot of it depends on like what strengths and weaknesses you may already have. So like I, I loved sales. So sales was like one of the last things I hired. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. I, I needed somebody that could be patient and do the analytics. I, I'm a high, if you got, have you guys know disc assessments? You're high disc? I. I'm a high DI. Yeah. I'm a very low, like phenomenally low SC. And so um, I've gotten better. My adapted's like a 30 at the C now. I'm more uh, analytical than I was when I, in my natural. But um, you know, you gotta know who you are and who you're not. So if you're not the enthusiastic sales guy, if you can't get on the phone and do it and, get, and stay with it and on and on and on and be on, then maybe what you need to do is find people on your team that can bring that energy and do it for you because what you do best is maybe staying behind the scenes and figuring it out. Uh, me personally, I don't even know how to do a lot of the stuff my team does. I know what I want to have done. Like I'm like the orchestrator. I don't know how to play the violin like they do, but I know how the violin should sound. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. that's kind of the way I look at it. That's awesome. <laughs> Anybody else? Questions for Mike? I know there's probably other questions that are coming in. 
Can we do this? Can we transition to the five things since we're like probably running out of time? And then yeah. I want to make sure that people are going to have questions as they come up. I just want to figure out some other stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, my day, the morning routine, we train for an hour and a half before we start work. We practice before we jump in the game. Uh, so that's another thing too. We could talk about that. Okay, so five things you don't want to do. Good? Mm -hmm. um, this is, keep in mind a lot of this is opinionated. I'm not putting this in, in uh, we're not getting a stone and, and you know, <laughs> this is me, my, what I don't do. Okay, if you don't want to be treated like a freelancer, don't dress like one. Now keep in mind what dress means and what it doesn't mean. Number one, yes, I do believe like if you want to be the cool guy with a retro Metallica t-shirt and you know, yeah, Converse chucks and walking in, that's cool, that's who you want to be. You want to impress your friends, that's what you got going on at work, go ahead. But just understand, if you don't want the guy to treat you like a freelancer, meaning telling you what to do in your campaigns, you want him to ask you for your professional opinion and trust you, how many of you guys hate when they tell you what to do because they think they know better than you? <laughs> okay, may, may want to look at how you're presenting, right? Be the professional, your clothes, your videos. I see guys out there, like I, I, I remember in my space, I started doing the video, I, I haven't seen it before me, the video meme with the, with the results, where it says 104 leads at the top and that, and now like there's so many people doing that, and then I, I'm like looking at him, and I'm like, they're ruining it because the guy's sitting there with a backwards hat and you know, he's like, hey, so if you guys want, dude, and he's like saying stuff, and he's, he literally said, I don't even want to say what he said because I don't know what, how I can curse here, but I'm like, <laughs> how could you do that? You just look like, you know, I can't give you money, right? You're, the guy you're going to give, give money is the same guy that's going to ask for it back. So landing pages, all that stuff. So you, know, you want to be treated like the guy that's got it together, be the guy that's got it together, the girl. When I say guy, I'm from New Jersey. Guy represents girl and guy and girl, man and woman in Jersey, sorry. We say like, what's up guys? Like, is that's cool, yeah. <laughs> um, don't create a best place to work if it means sacrificing the best place to grow. My employees, I'm transparent with them on the nonsense that's out there. Here's what I mean by that, and again, my opinion, okay? People in there, they've got, <laughs> okay, hold on. I'm gonna read to you, I got this picture. Best place to work, Kelsey, you know Kelsey. No, Kelsey. Kelsey, who's 23 years old, she's my assistant, so she's been with, she knows me in the way I think. She sends me an email with the subject line, you're gonna get a kick out of this. Because I asked her to nominate us for best place to work again. We won two years ago and we got 12 last year. And so, there must be a new like young kid right out of college that created this criteria. It said, please check off all that apply to your company. You guys ready for the list? Yeah, <laughs> I'm interested. Time for healthy activities at work, stress relief breaks for naps, massages, required breaks, so support groups for weight loss, stress, exercise. Some of these are okay, by the way. Flexible hours, work from home, remote work, financial planning services, beer fridge, kegerator, on-site happy hour, off-site happy hour, off-site social event outings, bring your pets to work, casual dress code, reimbursement for health club memberships, on-site massage or spa services, fitness track, on-site massage and spa services, um, fitness tracking apps and devices, pay time off for part-time employees, paid sabbaticals, health savings accounts, game room areas, ping pong, foosball, video games, etc. free daily lunches, company retreats, company trips, paid maternity leave, paid maternity leave longer than eight weeks, tuition reimbursement, paid time off for community service, concierge, Concierge services for your shopping and errands, ride sharing and transportation to work, to and from work, on-site fitness center, healthy cafeteria area, and vending options. Now keep in mind, some of these I think are okay. But like, come on, like concierge for my shopping? Like I'm not hooking my employees up with that. So <laughs> Kelsey says, what do you think of that? And I said, um, hey, I, I, I can't remember the exact thing, but it was like, hey, uh, we're out. <laughs> <laughs> um, see if there's an award for best place to grow your company because you're not falling for the nonsense. Um, and here's what I mean by that. Okay, I've read the books. I've read 250 books now. I'm actually more than that. That was, that was, that was when that was I did goal, your talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I read, I read on average like about a book a week, sometimes more. And, um, you know, I love hearing different perspectives. And you know what's common is they say, you don't have to pay your people as well if you can make this a fun environment. Give them some real fun stuff. Make them fun because right now what they want is social currency. They want social media currency. Hey guys, I'm at work right now. Oh my God, what are you doing? Look, we're about, whatever. Like that's it, you're cool now. What I tell my team is, look, we could do one of two things. We can either, and, and they all know this, we can do one of two things. I can load this place up with a ping pong table, it's gonna, it couldn't cost me 200 bucks. I can get a beer keg it's gonna cost me 1,000 bucks. I, I can go ahead and get a spa, whatever, it's gonna cost me a couple hundred bucks a month, we can get some lunches, no big deal. But you know what guys? 
none of those, raise your hand if any one of those things are going to make you better, faster, stronger, and more wealthy. Like, no. How about I just give you the money and we focus on doing what we came here for and it's growing this business. And so for my team, we go through trainings every day. And because they get better, they like it. They have fun. You know what's also fun outside of ping pong? Being good at something. Mm -hmm. That's fun. Go look at a kid that knows how to play basketball versus a kid that doesn't. One stands in the middle of the court and the other one's all over the place and kind of wants to keep playing. One more, dad. So I get them good at stuff. We train every day. We get better. We get better. We get better. And I tell them, like, look, guys, don't fall for that. That's, that's, they're doing that to pay you less. They're doing that to keep you here. I'm not here. I, sur I know I'm the average of the people I surround myself with. I, gotta, I, I chose you guys, so either you level up or I don't. And if I'm gonna pay, pay you guys, or if I'm gonna get you guys here playing ping pong all day and video games and all this stuff, you're not gonna get better, and I gotta, I gotta you feed off that. So hmm. for me personally, I, tell my, I train them, they understand, we're gonna pay you better, you're gonna get better, we're gonna make more money together, we're gonna grow and you're gonna have more opportunities because you're great and you're gonna have fun doing it. And they do, they have a lot of fun. We train all day in the morning. Anybody like that? <laughs> yeah, you get a couple head nods there. So that's one, or that's two. Three, don't forget to become recession proof or a recession beneficiary. So I went through a bad recession. I think a lot of people that started like building agencies over the last couple of years, they think they figured it out. Look, you may have figured it out in this economy. What are you building? How are you preparing? How well do you know business is a well-rounded owner to be able to prepare once things start changing and, and businesses start closing, right? Because that will happen. So are you creating digital products that you can start selling that may be more affordable so that when they can't afford a service fee, they can afford a digital product? Are you creating that? Are you creating that type of relationship with your customer where they keep buying more affordable stuff, they keep value uh, from you and you keep making money off that? Um, don't outwork your employees on their goals. My, my employees know, look, my goal, my goal is this. At this point in my, in my business, my goal is getting you guys to yours. That's it. You want to do this? You want to make 150 grand a year? That's my goal now. You want to make 100 grand a year? That's my goal now. You want to be able to be a publicist? That's my goal now. My goal is these things. Don't you dare let me outwork you. You want to be a publicist? Don't let me outwork you. You better be reading at night on what it takes to be a great publicist. You better learn how to be about, you better do some things in your non-publicist role that make me think, how can I not make her a publicist? Don't let me outwork you, right? So don't outwork your employees and your goal and have that conversation with them. Do you think I should be outworking you on your own life? Hmm. No, okay? And then number five, um, don't compete against me. That's more for stress-induced illness I don't want you to deal with. Um, just don't compete against me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's more just me talking smack because I like awesome. competition. That's awesome. <laughs> um, that's pretty amazing. So we're at time right now, but I do want to ask you a question. So all that stuff's great. I love talking to you. I could talk to you forever. I know you have to go out here. You're going to be on stage again doing the, the, the quick Q&A stuff too on the panel. Okay. And then he's got the podcast today. But um, let's say that people are, have questions that come up. Like, how are they keeping in touch with you? I know you, I also know you work, well, you don't ever promote this, but I know you do work with other business owners um, yeah. and agencies. Mm -hmm. I, did, I know you didn't want me to say I, 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 don't, I, I don't promote it because... I'm, I'm very selective who I spend my time with. Right. So, and what I mean by that is I don't care if they're like rich or not. Like I don't consider them, I don't think any rich person considers themselves rich. I definitely don't consider myself rich. But I want hustlers around me. I want people that take action. And I don't want people that just buy the Ty Lopez course and the Billy course and the, you know, Dan Henry course and then like they don't do anything with it. Right. So I need GSDers on my team. That's the name of the agency. It, the thing is agency GSD. So yeah, there's three things in there. You got one of them. The, vid machine thing, which is cool. We teach how to get more clients and acquire them through video. And then we've got build and scale your agency, which um, actually I, your group is different. So Patrick made a yep. domain for you. So I sell build and scale, you know this because you've probably seen it. I sell it for three grand. It's a, a whole seven week course on all the four pillars. Money, how to manage your money, by the way, <laughs> there's hacks. I went to Italy first class on Swiss Air, like beds and everything. I saw that video. For free. And I went to Italy for free because of the way I was able to manage my credit cards. And I get to take a trip like that every other month if I want to for free. Like eight? Huh? Isn't it like eight or six? Eight or six. Eight or six. Eight or six. What? Credit I got like eight credit cards for one category. I got something for this. So there's ways to structure those. There's a the money part of it. And then there's sales where I teach you acquisition, marketing, all that. And then we teach you... Um, Operation systems process, which by the way, that is where we are like crazy stellar um, systems of process and then people and culture, like how to develop your people, how to get your people. So that's three grand. And so Patrick and I, we, we talked about it. So there, there is, you know, because you've seen it, nobody gets this. It's if you go to 
buildandscalepromo.com, I think it is. It's uh, nine, it's like a thousand bucks or whatever. So anybody here that would like it, it's a thousand bucks. And then the agency GSD membership is like 100, 200 bucks a month. And then I go live in there regularly. Like I did the cold calls and I showed you Yeah, I was going to say, that was actually really cool. And I, I've yep. seen the community, which I think is really amazing. Um, and that's really cool. And then obviously people, if they, what, do, can they email you? Can they call you? Like, do you want me um, to yeah. so give them your personal Mike, cell phone? Mike or? RC Live is my handle for everything. I was able to find a handle that worked for everything, which took a little while. So Mike, my last name, RC, A-R-C-E, and then Live for Instagram. Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, cool. Instagram, I'm probably the most like interactive on with people. Cool. And we'll send out a follow-up too, but yeah. guys, amazing. Thank you so much for taking the time. Can we give a huge round of applause to Mike Garcia? Thank you guys, good questions. Thank you guys so much. Um, so what we're gonna do is, uh, Bo Harrison's on next, which I'm really excited about. We're gonna take a break and come back here at uh, 2.15, and we're gonna get on with that. And then, uh, so let's take a quick break, 10 minute break. All right, see you soon. Cool. Sorry for going on too long. No.